Hey, we're back. This is John. Hey, it's Paul. And it's Eric. And it's What the Fuck Marvel. I mean, <laughs> What If Geeks. <laughs> uh, this is What If Geeks, and we are here with our first review of the new show, WandaVision, on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so right off the bat, I guess we can kind of, I don't know, go... We, we've kind of talked in length about the trailers and everything, so I guess we can kind of jump right into it. But I think the first thing I want to jump right into is uh, the fact that this one, they decided they were going to drop two episodes. And I think that might bear discussion after we're done pulling it apart a little bit as to why they did that. And I think when we're done discussing, you guys will kind of figure out where I'm going with that. But, uh, All right, I'm curious now. I don't even know what that yeah, means. Me <laughs> all right. So, well, all right. So, um, I guess we'll just start off right from the very beginning, right? Uh, I mean, format. We, yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, weird. We went through the trailer that it looked like it was going to be referencing a bunch of different sitcoms through the ages, right? But nobody knew how they were going to do it. So, this first episode, uh, you know, you get something that. I know we've all missed uh, for a little while now is the, uh, that Marvel logo and fanfare, right? Starts up and you get like a whole bunch of the images and some new images from like Endgame and shit. But then it starts to fade to black and white little by little until it's all black and white and it shrinks down to what the 4 3 ratio. Mm-hmm. And then the audio even like fades out into like old school TV audio, like that monotone shit. So yeah, it was a, a nice little effect, you know? Luckily they left it still high def for the image yeah. quality, <laughs> even though it's not the right yeah. dimensions. <laughs> I thought it would have been funny if they would have tried it, but uh, <laughs> I they didn't. Um, so yeah, so we start off with what appears to be uh, WandaVision is the first episode is like modeled after the Dick Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah, I, did you say earlier that uh, Dick Van Dyke had he some uh, on this consulting episode. on this or something? Yeah, for like the little physical gags in the beginning, like that opening scene where like he wa- he um, you see Vision is carrying her across the threshold, but he phases through the door and she falls on her ass. Right, and he comes in and he Take phases right through. Yeah, he phases right through the. Uh, the chair, but she faces with him this time. Uh, and that that's like an old trope on the Dick Van Dyke show is when he would trip over. He used to trip over an ottoman all the time. And then ottoman. later on, I think he, he sees it and then walks around it. Yeah, yeah. So it became a thing where you never knew if he was going to trip over it or not, but most of the times you tripped over it. Yeah. So, yeah. And and the, the, vision, first scene, uh... the, fir- the very first scene, they drive in in a, I mean, like an old... 1950s, you know, Studebaker, or like one of those, one of those kind of cars. It's very early 50s, um, very clearly early 50s. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of already know where we're setting or yeah. setting at now. And, and, and it's got one of those cheesy opening, you know, songs, right? Like he's a whatever, and yeah, you know. yeah. It's almost a throwback to the to the. Yeah whatever the entry music for that show right yeah right we open it up with what vision walking through the into the kitchen right is that how we open this thing um that sounds right she's doing a bunch of kitchen tasks or something yeah she's using her magic to do all the kitchen tasks so she's like cleaning and he walks in and walks right into a dish yeah and it breaks but she is very 50s tv housewife Leave it to Beaver Mom, dress, apron, pearls, heels. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and so when he smashes into the dish, he says, like, uh, you know, my wife and her flying saucers. And she says, my husband and his indestructible head, which I put in our notes. I'm like, that's got to be a nod to when Thanos ripped the Mind Stone out of his head. <laughs> you know, not so indestructible. <laughs> yeah. That's messed up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got to be. But I also wonder, though, like, okay, the flying saucers thing, right? Now, while obviously like, she's not an alien, is this a reference to something we're going to get into later? And it's Sword, the the Shield affiliate, 
because they yeah. are supposed to be, you know, monitoring extraterrestrials. So who knows? I mean, maybe. Yeah, but, th- there's a lot of uh, well, there's a lot of corny references and and little puns and things, and some of them seem to be references to stuff from comics or from MC- like the flying. I mean, that could be like a like a really obscure Cree reference or something. You know, it's sure. like, yeah, it could be. Anything. <laughs> But yeah, but I'm also wondering, like, with a show like this, I'm not going to leave anything at face value because you you just you never know, and I think you're going to learn more as it goes. But uh, like, so this thing plays out where, um, I guess, what are they? They talk about what their plans are for the day because uh, they're like, you know, is there something special about today? Because there's a heart on the date. And I think Eric, you marked something about the calendar, right? Which bears discussion after you're done drinking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we could do we could do that in a bit, but I mean, there's a bunch of uh, number conspiracy stuff that goes along with uh, the references in here, and 823 is one of them, um, which might be a reference to Earth 823, or it could be a reference to um, a comic. Uh, this would be 23-8, you know, reverse order, but 23-8 for Avengers 238, which uh, is one of the ones where um, uh, Vision comes back from, from being uh, you know, harmed. <laughs> and I think, it, John, you just said this, but it bears repeating, like, nothing in this can be face value, because otherwise, this is dumb. Um, you, you sit through... I did sat through episode one and I'm like, okay, all of this stuff means something. So you start, you start taking notes like 823. What does that mean? What's the address mean? Why did she say indestructible head? Otherwise it's just a, it's, it's ridiculous and a kind of a waste of time. Right. You, you have like a, uh, by the end of episode one, I felt like I had two minutes of actual MCU content in a 21 minute episode. Okay. So then instead of, before we get into the breakdown of the episodes, then let me just get this part out of the way, because I kind of, I agree, I agree with you guys where on the one hand, like we, we discussed what we thought this was going to be. And I had mentioned that I thought it might be like the breakdown of her mind leading into, because we know it's leading into Spider-Man and Dr. Strange. Right. Uh, so taking that part part of it and me going into it with that, while I enjoyed it, I was getting frustrated with it. And um, because, spoiler alert for the rest of our episode, uh, <laughs> the episode one is this is just this one show. Episode two is a completely separate show. Now they tie into each other between characters and, and whatnot, but they're like the settings are specific. One, it seems like uh, Eric said, one is in the fifties, one is in the sixties. Is the next one going to be seventies and so on and so forth? Don't know. With the trailer, we didn't know if they're going to be kind of bouncing around, and we can get into why this is going on. But uh, Heather brought up a point after watching both episodes was that you know for. I guess the casual audience to watch something like this, it would have either a been better as a movie and have it bounce a little quicker from show to show or B go ahead and binge the whole thing because otherwise you're waiting a week after a week to see them bounce into a different show is going to, you know, it, it seems a little redundant. And there was a part of me that thought like, I think from maybe an editing standpoint that some of these, and they're very brilliant at Marvel. We love them all. They do an amazing job, but I'm thinking that with this show, at least the part of the mark that they missed is I think maybe they got so enraptured with this concept of them being in these different shows that they didn't see how much it was going to drag on in each episode. You know what I mean? So like yeah, maybe okay. a little maybe a little too much hubris or or something I don't know where you know they thought oh this is an awesome concept but you know we're gonna do this and it could have it could have gone a little bit differently so but, which is which is going to my point of what I said earlier that I was gonna wait on was why they dropped two episodes is I'm thinking maybe they watched that first episode all the way through 
and said, if we just drop this first episode, we're going to lose people. <laughs> we better drop yeah. two. Yep. Uh, so I think, you know, like we always say, like every time Marvel made a different movie in the first few sets of movies, we were like, this is where they're going to lose people. And they never did. I think this show is where they were almost going to lose people. <laughs> you know, I really do. And uh, because even like Heather was like, it's not really my cup of tea. It's not my thing, but I'm going to watch it because I know it ties into everything. So she's not too happy with it. I'm kind of middle of the road on it. Like, you know, I enjoyed it because I'm a big sitcom buff too. I mean, I love the old sitcoms. So I liked those nods, but and I, there's also the part where I think I know where it's going. So I kind of want to see it, but yeah, I'm, I'm not as thrilled with what I've been seeing so far as I thought I would be. Yeah, if, if you don't know and think that this is building to something else, that they're getting somewhere, then what you're just watching on the surface, you're like, well, what am I doing? And, and Yeah, you just you watch a bunch like of Marvel a, characters act out TV shows. And yeah. I can go to YouTube and watch I Love Lucy. Right. Um, <laughs> and it parts felt like an inside joke I wasn't in on. Um, <laughs> and But you're like, all right. And then it, it's not till episode two where and I don't want to get ahead, but like the helicopter and the radio and like those things, you're like, okay, now I'm, you've got me back because I know we're getting to something. Yeah. But all of one, when he's like at the office, he's like, but what do we do here? And that whole like, come on. Right. Yeah. So and I think that's, so if we go back to the calendar now, right, we're about to break the episode down a little bit. When you go to the uh, the calendar, the, the the two of them look at the calendar because she asked him, you know, what's special about today? And he's like, oh, I know, don't you? And she's like, of course I do. You know, what is it? Because there's a heart on the calendar for that date. So they're trying to figure out what it is. You can clearly see neither one of them knows what the hell that mark is, right? And throughout the episode, you see that there are little things like Vision's job. He has a job, but he doesn't know what he does there. And that that could play into later on uh, a further discussion. There's a lot of little things in there that they they don't know, and I think there's a, a really big reason for that. You know, so they uh, he heads um, off to work. Go ahead, go ahead, Eric. No, no, I'm just since you guys both commented on it. I mean, this feels so when I was a kid, little kid. Uh, you know, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe younger. My grandpa used to watch me. He had no cable or anything. So I just get the air TV stuff at his house. I used to watch a lot of I Love Lucy there. Not because I like that show, but lack of options. Um, it feels like that. It very much feels like that. Yeah. That's not what I want in an MCU show. though. In fact, that's not what I want in any show. I don't even watch sitcoms anymore. I think I've been tainted by some of those old ones. Like I never like I never even liked that '70s show that much. But anyway, right. beside the point. But so they definitely got that feeling right, and, and they're really pushing it. Like the the episode names, like "Film Before a Live Studio Audience." Episode two is called "Don't Touch That Dial." Right. Like yeah. they're pushing it. But what I noticed though is that episode one was essentially all fake. You know, ignore for a minute the, the sort of Easter eggs they tossed in there, but it's all fake. It's all it's all altered reality, whatever, until like literally the last 30 seconds. And then you get a glimpse into the real world or what I assume is the real world. Yeah. And then it goes away. And then in episode two, there's a little bit more of the real world exposed. There's there's moments where she notices things and it takes you out of it. You see color when it should be black and white. And not, not to spoil the end of the episode, but I mean, the whole place turns color at the very end. You yeah, know? which is why I think we're definitely building towards something. I think those glimpses of reality are going to happen more and more frequently throughout so the episode. Th- me too. And I think that's what they're going to do is the reality is going to break down. And the way that we'll know it's breaking down is not just her looking at things, but the fact that, you know, the first episode was 20 minutes of bullshit and a minute of reality. And then the second episode was, you know, 18 minutes of bullshit and a few minutes of reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think they'll make it more and more until you've actually got an MCU story running in reality, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah. But I hope that's where they're headed because, but then that also begs the question, which we don't have to talk about right now. We can save it for the discussion, but can they keep this going for multiple seasons? 
I don't think no, I don't think they're, they're planning on it. It's yeah, a, okay. It's a small arc to get you to the next set of movies, and and we'll get to that in a bit. All right, go ahead though. All right, so yeah, so Vision heads off to his job, whatever the fuck that is, and uh, oh, and he's and he's he's Paul Bettany by the way. He's not Vision anymore yeah, when yeah, he gets yeah. there. He wears a he wears a skin or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, they show like, some weird cartoons, which are also, I guess. I guess they're kind of Dick Van Dykeish too, but some weird cartoony things where he like, you know, he like gets in a little skin suit and walks out. There's a lot of that too, though. Like when I'm going to, hopefully I'm not spoiling episode two, but when he chews the gum on accident or swallows the gum on accident right. and yeah. it suddenly goes to a cartoon version of him and there's like gears running gears. around and the gums you know getting all jammed. It looks like in there yeah. <laughs> for the current vision, but it would back then. That's how they would depict it back yeah. then. It was kind of, I mean, that part was kind of humorous, but at the same time, it was a little silly. But uh, so, yeah, so he heads off to work, and that's when we meet uh, her neighbor, Agnes, right? Uh, played by Catherine Hahn. Is that right? I think. Sounds right. Yeah, yeah, sounds right. I've seen her in a bunch of, <laughs> been in a whole bunch of shit, and she's a great actress. Um, but so, you know, she comes, rings the doorbell, comes to introduce herself, asks her, you know, asks uh, Wanda a few questions, whatever. And then uh, when Wanda says something like uh, talks mentions the, the date on the calendar, she's uh, trying to remember what it was or whatever. Uh, Agnes starts drilling her on questions like, you know, well, what is it? You know, is it a birthday? She's like, no. And she's like, is it an anniversary? She's like, yeah, it's our anniversary. And still cannot f- like lay how long we've been together. What you know? What any specifics? She, she blanks. You can see it. So Agnes helps her. And she asks her, what's a single girl like you? She's like, oh, I'm married. She goes, oh, you're not wearing a ring. Oh, right. she didn't think of that. Mm-hmm. How long have you been married? Uh, feels like we've been together forever. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think it right. Um, right. Right. And then it happens later when the when the boss comes over for dinner. Like, where'd you meet? How long have you been together? Why don't you have kids? Like, none of the stuff that she has answers to. And they're both like, um. Yeah. And, and since we'll kind of like bounce around a little bit. I'm going to throw out there that I believe Agnes is actually just uh, a, what do you, a cover up name, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. And it's really, she's Agatha Harkness. I think I, it may have, it, it may have double meaning because I read something else um, in the Bewitched show, which there's obviously elements of in here. Yeah. Um, there's Endora, who's like one of the old witches or whatever, and she's right. played by an actress named Agnes Moorhead, <laughs> which could be. could be a double reference to the to what you're about to say because yeah. Agnes can also be Agatha, who was essentially the first witch. <laughs> and, and the nosy neighbor from Bewitched character name was Agnes, the one oh, who, was looked it? The, oh, who looked okay. through the blinds and was like, "There's something weird going on over there." Oh wow! Oh, oh okay, that's a lot of connections actually all- in one name. <laughs> it's pretty it's like impressive agnes is like inception <laughs> so well yeah so now it would also go back to like that little pendant or brooch or whatever that she's wearing i think that might have some meaning you know yeah. and like there's all little things that she says like uh she mentions her husband ralph that you don't see right uh and she mentions him through two episodes and you never see this guy but she says something about what when wanda says oh yes it's our anniversary she goes well at least you can remember it I don't think Ralph would remember ours unless it was a beer named June 20, uh, June 2nd. And June 2nd was Salem Witch Trials. So, <laughs> so it's definitely like a, a nod to witches and whatever, you know. So, yeah, I, I think you're going to find out a whole lot more about her. Now, whether or not she's manipulating Wanda, which I think she is, We'll find out later because I think she's probably manipulating her to keep like to help keep Wanda's powers in check. Yeah. And, and she's also the only person that plays the same role in the two episodes, right? That yeah. I think the, the guy at Vision's work in the first episode is one of the neighbors and one of the guys at the meeting, right? That Vision goes to in the second, but it's not the same character. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so it's definitely she's something specific. And uh, like I said, I, I think she's trying to keep Wanda's powers in check for Sword, maybe. 
but who knows? I mean, we'll, we'll find out. It was going to be a discussion point and let's discuss it later, but I just want to throw it in here now because there's definitely a question for me of who created this fake reality that I assume this is. Is yeah, it, Wanda? I, it, is Wanda. it Is it Agnes? Does it have something to do with sword? Is it a little bit of both or all three? We'll get there. We'll get there at the discussion, yeah. but it's worth considering. Yep. All right. So then we, uh, so she's going to help Wanda plan out her anniversary dinner and, uh, we cut to Vision at work, and uh, I thought it's funny that they, you know they call him Vision without batting an eye. I mean, <laughs> like, it's just his name, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But, an uh, indicator among many that something is wrong with this place, right? right. Yeah, yeah, because nobody even blinks at like, especially in the fifties, at a name like Vision. But whatever. So uh, he is, yeah, he's in there punching numbers really, really fast. You know, and he gets done with all these reports, and he brings them to. Uh, the character Paul mentioned, I can't remember his name in the first episode, but uh, he's, you know, the guy goes, you know, wow, you're, you know, you're like a, an adding machine. And he's yeah. like, no, I'm not, no, I'm, I'm a regular human. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a carbon based human, just like you. And <laughs> so, like, like Paul, uh, Eric said, cheesy lines, but I mean, kind of funny. Um, so, that's when, that's when he brings up, you know, uh, can I ask you a question? And the guy says, sure. He goes, what do we do here? And he goes, well, you know, we keep track of our numbers, you know. And he's like, yeah, but for what? And the guy doesn't, doesn't answer him, which could be a nod to, uh, like, you know, when in the old sitcoms, you know, the dad would go off to work and you never really saw what he did or, or whatever, you know. And I think that'll come into play more with the discussion later, too. So, uh, but I think that might have something to do with it. Like you never really see what these dads do, or sometimes you do, but you know, not really. Very rarely, yeah. Yeah, they just they go to work, you know. Uh, so then the uh, the boss comes in, right, and it's Mister Hart, and Mister Hart tells them, you know, hey, Vision, we're on for dinner tonight, right? And Vision's all like, uh oh, you know, calls home, tells Wanda, and you know, uh, you know, we got we're ready for dinner tonight, whatever. And there's a bunch of back and forth between the two of them that's obviously the old sitcom uh, who's on first routine, kind of like uh, confusing lines where he's trying to hint to her that the boss is coming home and she's trying to hint to him that it, she's ready for their anniversary dinner. So that's not going to go well at all. Uh, now what? Uh, I guess we just cut to the dinner, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, boss and the wife come over for dinner, and the wife is Deborah Joe Rapp from uh, that '70s show. That show, yep. And uh, and the boss mentions at one point that the last guy he had dinner with, like it went horribly, and that guy gets fired. And so Vision, in in the reality, you know, Vision's worried about it. Wanda comes out in the '50s version of the negligee, which goes yeah, all the way to the floor. To that point, though, it's the guy that got fired is. Uh, he's the character you'll see him in episode two. Yeah. He's a character with a big fat mustache, and you know he saw like my wife thought five courses was was sufficient. And he said, "Well, you thought wrong." But <laughs> uh, one that comes out in what what it, in the fifties must have been risque, um, even though it almost goes to her neck and to the floor, um, and has long sleeves. But uh, look good to me. <laughs> but, uh, and and she surprises you know vision but there's the boss and the wife and they have to explain that she's european from sokovia and whatever and and then a bunch of like the back and forth and the jokes of agatha uh excuse me agnes helping her get ready for dinner and her using her powers to try to cook the dinner while the wife you know tries to help and i mean that's felt very bewitched yeah um, but nothing nothing really plays up the actual like what we're doing in one division until um the boss and the wife start asking a bunch of questions about like, well, how long you've been married? Where'd you meet? What, you know, what's going on? And she does something and the boss starts to choke, falls out. And she says, she's like, vision, help him, help him. Yeah. And the, the wife of the boss is doing some, she's like, the camera's really tight on her. And she's like, stop it, stop it, stop it. Right. Almost like she's stuck in a, uh, a freeze loop or, or a loop. Yeah. And then Vision uses his powers, goes and grabs up whatever was choking the boss and it all turns out okay. Yeah. Um, and then they have a, 
they meet together on the couch and they're like, you know, we're a kind of a kooky couple, aren't we? Or something like that. And they, she does the magic and they get rings. Um, cause it's one of the things that they hadn't done before. Yeah. Um, there's a, at some point in that episode, there's like a fake commercial for a toaster. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was about to touch on that. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. And, and it's a, uh, Dark it's industry. Toaster. yeah, but it's, but it's by Stark. And, yeah. and if you look at it, one of the videos that I saw, I didn't notice it at first, but if you look at it, they freeze framed on it. It kind of, the toaster kind of looks like a face and it's got a little red dot. Um, the only and, bit of color you get there. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I think there are different times in the comics uh, and maybe even in the movies where because Vision's an android, they refer to him as a toaster. They do. Yeah, like a walking toaster. There was something else that I caught because uh, I watched, tried to watch it twice. But as I sped through it uh, on the toaster, when the commercial model turns it on, when it starts, it the sound it makes sounds just like the warm-up to... Uh, Iron Man's Repulsor Blast. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So exactly like that little wee thing that it does. So, yeah. And they, they, they also linger on it for a, mem- a minute, if you remember. They look at the toaster, and then they're waiting, and then the camera pans up to their faces, just like looking, and then it goes back to the toaster. If you right. pay attention, the light on the toaster that's flashing is red. It's not black and white. It's red. Right. Yeah, that's what you said. It's the only bit of color in this. Oh, okay. But then it also starts to flash quicker. Like it's a beep, 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 beep. It starts to go quick. And that'll come into play again on the next episode in that commercial. So, yeah, so we pan, or well, we focus on them on the couch, right? Like it zooms in. They kind of do that thing where they put their heads together, like, oh. And then it zooms right in on them. And then the credits for the fake show start to roll. And it pans out and it's a, the monitor or the, I don't know if it's the border of the show or if it's the monitor itself, but it is a monitor on what looks like a desk at a, at a I don't know, like a, where someone would be stationed to monitor something, right? Like it yes. looks like one of the screens that they're supposed to keep track of. Um, and there you see the sword logo yeah. and you see the arm of someone who's, I think, sitting there. Yeah, and watching the right. mo- you know, watching the monitors, and up in the and it, top left, it's in color, and, and that's in color. Yeah, that's in color, and then uh, in the top left, there are two readouts, one in red and one in green. And so I don't know if that's supposed to just be Wanda. Someone said, "Is it Wanda and Vision?" But Vision's dead, right? In right. this, uh, it could be Wanda and somebody else, or whatever. But it definitely could be somebody's vitals that they're monitoring but it definitely looks like that it's kind of like a little uh, it's, not, it's not moving it's just right. steady but it looks like it's straight up red and then the second one is green so it's definitely it definitely looks like somebody's monitoring something in this in the end the very end of that episode yeah and then it cuts out to the the actual credits for the wandavision show and i sat through them because i'm like something's got to happen here right like it can't be, yeah. that can't be it. Like, <laughs> I thought something was going to happen after the credit. So did I, and it went through so fast. I literally said, because it was doing the credits for WandaVision, I, I literally said out loud, was that a whole cold opener? Right? Because I had heard that these episodes were not going to be like 20, 30 minutes. They were going to be longer. So I was like, was that just a cold opener? That's a really long cold opener. And Heather was like, no, it's the end of the show, you idiot. <laughs> and then sure enough, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that happened after those credits was episode two. <laughs> so uh, anything we missed at episode one? I don't think so. All right. Awesome. On to episode two. So, so we uh, start up with episode two. And episode two... Opens up with a straight up like an animated intro. Yeah. Like much more like. No, there's something right before the intro, isn't there? Did that have a cold opening? Like a fake cold opening? I think it was the two of them in the beds. Oh, right. They they were in the separate beds. No, it's two of them in a car at first. Like they just got married. She's got the, she's got the thing over the veil over her head and they're like, right. 
that's one. No, that's two. That's two. Okay. <laughs> I promise. I thought it opened up with the two of them in the bed. I promise because I'm looking at it right now. No. <laughs> Is that part of the credits? No, because the credits are all animated. Hold on. So weird. Oh, you know what? It's a recap is what it is. That's what I'm going yeah. yeah, it's a recap. My bad. So, yeah, it does start with the beds. It starts with the beds. Yeah, after, the, after the Marvel Studios title opener, it's them in the beds. Yeah. It's in the so, old school separate beds. Right. Separate twin beds. Um, she hears a noise uses her powers to turn the lights on. They have this back and forth. And then she does the magic to bring the two beds together into one, which yeah. happens somewhere between the 60s and the 70s. It became okay to show a fictional married couple in bed together. I think the Brady Bunch was the first one to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike and Mike and Carol um, slept together. But like Desi and Lucy didn't. Rob and Laura Petri didn't. Um, None of those other shows did. Right. So, yeah. So, then the uh, the intro is animated straight up in the style of Bewitched. Yep. And they actually did a really good job with it. Like, the animation looks exactly like it. Yeah. You know, it, it's got a whole, like, little upbeat tune that goes on. And, uh, actually, if you go back and you listen to the, the tune, it's in the same beat as a song you hear later on in the episode when you hear Help Me, Rhonda. It's like, you know, do, 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 that kind of thing. So it's like that, but it's in a Bewitched style. So it was a de- it was a, a fun nod. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it felt more 60s because he's wearing a cardigan and not a suit. Yeah. She's, got, she's dressed more like Mary Tyler Moore in the kind of 60s pants, um, you know, sort of capri pants thing. Um, yeah, you could tell they're moving decades. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, and and I forget the the whole underlying story in this one. The, the non sort of MCU story is like there's this uh, talent show that they're going to be in. He's going to be a magician. She's going to be the assistant. Yeah. Um, and then she's trying to get in with this woman named Dottie, who's like runs the neighborhood. Um, and and then the video I watched talked about uh, the little town they live in. At first, I think Westview. There two, yeah, there were two houses there, right? And now in this one, it feels more like they walk down the street and there's a cul-de-sac and there's all this stuff. And and so she's, if it's a reality that Wanda is making, she's sort of filling it in. Yeah, yeah, but she's also filling it in, kind of in the same vein as the shows in our reality, because like back in the fifties, you only saw like the set or whatever. And uh, right. later on you would get some outdoor shots or whatever. Like yep. you said, like with the Brady Bunch, you would see the backyard mm-hmm. with the AstroTurf grass, you know. Yep. Right. <laughs> like that kind of shit. Yeah. So but yeah, to your point of the the talent show, I mean I think that's kind of where we open up, right? Is the two of them in the living yep. room? Yeah. And and he calls himself um Illusion. Illusion, right? And she's glamour. She's glamour. Which uh, I think I heard on a YouTube channel, so I'd have to go fact check it. But it's supposed to be a reference to two characters from the Scarlet Witch and Vision comic in the 80s. They were another magic duo, Illusion and Glamour, who they were at odds with, but then they became friends, kind of, you know, whatever. So it could be them. And even just the idea, like, Illusion, something not real, and Glamour, you know, the is a spell is typically like in role playing games stuff a glamour spell is something that would confuse or daze or or make you believe something that wasn't real. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, so they're practicing for this show and then I guess he's headed off to meet with the boys about the uh the neighborhood watch. Yeah. And she's going to go meet up with Agnes. Oh, in some the noise that they hear uh, as she walks outside, there is the world's still black and white, and there is a colored helicopter, like a toy. It looks like oh, a toy yeah. helicopter. It might have been a drone. Like you could argue it was a drone, maybe. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It's a little toy helicopter drone. Yeah, but it's painted it's in, red and yellow, painted in red and yellow of, of of Iron Man. Yeah, and it's got the sword logo on it. 
So, you know, and she uh, she stares at it for a minute. So she holds it up. So she's able to touch it. She picks it up. She's looking at it for a second. And that's when Agnes cuts in. Like, there she is. And she drops it real quick, you know. Yeah. And she says something like, there she is, the star of the show. Right. So you wonder if she's a star of, uh, you know, if it's a reference to the star of this show that we're watching or the star of whatever show they're forcing around her or of her own mind or whatever. So again, triple quadruple entendre. <laughs> so, um, and then I think the, she goes off to meet the moms that are planning this thing. Um, yeah. With Dottie and the Stepford wives. Yeah. And then she's talking to Dottie at, at the end of the meeting and there's a radio there and it's playing help me Rhonda. Yeah. And then a voice starts saying, Wanda, uh, is it, what are you doing? It's not, what are you doing? Who's what, doing this to you? Who's doing this to you? Right. Yeah. And is it me or did that sound like roadie? It sounded like war machine. It was sort of hard to tell. Um, it was. Could have been. I, th- I thought it was roadie. And again, you I'm know, not sure. I'm not sure based on reaction if Dottie could hear it. Um, yeah, because she certainly got her transfixed. Yeah. Yeah, she stopped. Like again, another one of those like frozen in a loop where she's stuck. But there's a, uh, a couple of key points in there that I thought could mean something. Could just be in passing. But um, one was uh, the guy that plays Dottie's husband in this is the same uh, character, right? or not character, but the same actor in this in the other reality from episode one that was the guy that got fired, right. right, for not cooking a good enough dinner and Vision gets a promotion, right? Could Could it be that those things are tying into each other and that's why Dottie's so cold to her? You know, because <laughs> she's right. pissed off that her husband got fired, you know. Um, and then there's also when uh, Dottie is discussing things with them, she says, remember, this is all for the children. And then in unison, like drones, they all say, for the children. Right. And that comes up multiple times throughout the episode with the entire town. Which was my other point in the notes. They keep saying, for the children, where the fuck are these children? Right. <laughs> because for, for a town that's doing a whole fundraiser for children, there ain't a kid running around this neighborhood. So I really, I, it's got to be a reference to what's going to happen at the end of the episode. Right. But um, also at that meeting is where Wanda is, when she's sitting there, sitting next to her is the only black woman in, uh, in the show. And it's, well, she introduces herself as Geraldine, but it's like grown up Monica Rambeau from Captain Marvel. Yeah, right? and that that actress is the actress that's slated to play Monica Rambeau in Captain Marvel too. Right. So it would make sense if we stay on that topic. If Sword is involved in this and her mother was a pilot working with you know with all, with the government and everything it would make sense maybe she was working for sword right. for whatever reason you know not necessarily saying she's a bad guy or doing what or whatever you know but maybe she's just working for sword and she thinks she's doing something right or whatever by monitoring uh Wanda but who knows what she's doing but it's definitely Monica Rambo yeah you know that, i mean that don't, there's no way you're going to have the um this actress play two separate characters this close together in production, right. you know, it's gotta be the same character. Mm-hmm. So I it's agree. Geraldine in the show for now, but, uh, I so, think, uh, I, I wonder, I kind of wonder if like, uh, maybe sh- uh, sword agents or whatever are able to enter her reality somehow and they keep trying, but every time they try, they get dragged into her you know what I mean? Her fake world. Right. So like, could be, so like be- Monica Rambeau tries to come in and she gets dragged into the whole thing and becomes a woman in the town. And yeah, cause it, it wouldn't be a, a far step from some of the technology we've seen in the MCU up to this point where you had like Tony Stark had that 
barf technology, he called it, where he was able to go into his own memories or whatever. You, you modify that a little bit and you can enter somebody's mind or enter, you know, somebody's okay. memories or that's what they were trying to do. And like you said, maybe they're trapped, maybe they're not trapped, but they're in there, you know? Yeah. I mean, it could be the same thing with the helicopter, right? You hear, you hear the, the loud noises first. Like it could have been a real helicopter. And then when it got dragged into the fakeness, it became a toy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely could have been. So, uh, yeah. So Dottie, um, Dottie cut your hand on the glass. She's like, she's like who are you? I'm, I'm on to you. Something like that. Like I'm on to you. I know who you are. Yeah. And then, squeezes the glass and and she's cut and that blood is red like that's the only that's thing color in yeah. aside from the helicopter at this point yeah so um wanda runs and grabs a napkin wets it goes to help her bandage herself up and Dottie says no no you know a woman needs to know how to get blood out of lin- white linen Sorry. you know you know she's got to do it on her own which makes you wonder what the fuck her husband's doing to her <laughs> <laughs> And there is uh, in the opening in the animation. I don't know if it's a nod to what just happened there or something that's going to happen later, but you see Dottie in the animation, and there's a little red spot on her or a little dark spot on her her blouse. So I don't know if maybe it's like a nod to what's going to happen to her in the episode, or or just or it just happened to be a mark on there that I, I don't I don't know. I could be again could be reading too much into it. Maybe not. I'm not leaving anything up to chance. <laughs> I'm going to overanalyze everything in this fucking show until we get to the end. All right. All right. On that note, then, I want to uh, drop down into something else because Dottie, Dottie is – when Dottie is talking to um, – what the hell's her name? Beverly or the, the other one of the other housewives, right? She says to her, the devil's in the details. Yep. And then that lady leans over to her, Agnes. No, Agnes leans over and says, that's not the only place he is. Right. Right. (laughs) Which, again, is that a nod to Agatha Harkness and Mephisto? Mephisto. That's what I was going to get, right? So Dottie is played by Emma Caulfield, who played a demon on the fucking Buffy the Vampire show. (laughs) Is that that, that on purpose? Right. And then I, I don't want to spoil what happens at the end of of episode two, but there's definitely a Mephisto reference there too. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah. So, Oh yeah. Something else I noticed um, in episode two, when the uh, Wanda walks into, I want to say the dining room or the eating kitchen area, whatever, there's a vague silhouette of art on the wall. And when you look at it, it's actually the Hydra base that she and Pietro were experimented in. Like it's like that. It's that building. Like they do like a shot in Age of Ultron of the outside of the fortress, and that's what's on the wall. So there's like yeah, like there's all of, which is again another nod to this has got to be at least somewhat in Wanda's mind or using her mind for something, you know. Which goes to the radio, you know, who's doing this to you, Wanda? You know, uh, uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, what I think happens next, or really close to next, the watch, the, the mid the fake, commercial. There's another, there's another fake commercial. Yeah. Yes. And there's Strucker, a whole Strucker watch. Who? Yeah. Strucker was the the Hydra Nazi dude who experimented right. on her Pietro. Yeah. And when you see the watch face, there's the Hydra logo. Yes. Yeah, and it says Strucker right across it, and it's, it says Swiss made or whatever. But there's also two time things. So the first time you see the watch on the guy's wrist, um, it shows like 912. Not sure if that has any significance. But uh, the second time when it's like sort of on display at the end of the commercial, it says 242, which people have suggested is a reference to an Avengers comic number 242 where Vision comes back and rejoins okay. Wanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Which, uh, lo, yeah those two like one in every episode i could see it yeah you know? uh there's um again you have the same thing you had with the toaster where as the commercial winds down or wraps up the ticking of the watch speeds up so i don't know if those two have something to do with like wanda's grip on reality 
you know, like loosening or, or whatever. But those two things, speeding up the flashing of the toaster and the ticking of the watch have to mean something. You know, because they both do it. So I guess we're going to find out. Um, I feel like the rest of the the episode is the talent show. Vision shows up. He goes to the the security meeting, which turns out to just be a gossip fest. Um, somebody gives him gum. He chews it. It messes him up. Eric, you talked about the cartoon. Yeah. You see the little gum with the smiley face work its way down through his cartoon body, and gets <laughs> stuck in his gears. Um, Dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, but it makes him drunk. Um, I don't know. He shows up at the thing, and they they get through the the show the talent show and it's actually pretty funny like vision actually uses some of his powers and then wanda uses her powers to cover for it yeah um, yeah like when he goes to don't... fly and she yeah. magics uh, a pulley system yeah um she pretends to go in the he pulls out the, the sort of the big prop which is the disappearing cabinet thing and then she pulls geraldine monica lambo through it um yeah. and she's like i was just backstage a minute ago how how am i here now uh, yeah, and so they're they, like, we're not going to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so they end up like getting the award for being the funniest and whatever. And and uh, uh, but at the end, they come back together and they're back in their outfits they were in at the beginning um, after changing out of their their costumes for the talent show. And they sit on the couch. I think they kiss for just a second, but when she gets up, she's pregnant. Yes. And she right. says something about children right before that. Right. And then she and says something like, is this really happening? Yeah. And he says, I think it is. Yeah. And then as she looks, um, when she realizes she's pregnant, she looks and everything starts to become color. Yeah. The, the walls, vision, her, the rest of the house. Yeah. Th- there's one more scene in the middle there. Remember, she hears something outside and they go out to look and there's like a beekeeper coming out of the sewer oh, right, and he's right. got the sword logo on his back and she stares at it for a minute and she sort of realizes something's wrong. And then she's like, I don't remember what she says, but she's like, no, she's and no. rewinds the whole thing back to that. And then it plays through again a different way. Yeah. And that's when you get the color reveal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the beekeeper was weird because you don't see his face, but nope. he's covered in bees. It he was almost like, from, and he comes up from the up to the street through the manhole, through the yeah. manhole. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's like you said. She says no. For a minute, I had like a, a vague nod to a Spider-Man villain Swarm, who was like made up of bees, but I, it could be nothing, you know. But uh, but another Marvel character, so yeah. who knows. But yeah, so she says no, rewinds it, they go back. She's pregnant, everything becomes color. And then, is that it? Yeah, I, th- I think that's pretty much it for that episode. And, and you know, I hadn't thought about it until we just talked about it, but this has to be her reality because she definitely rewinds that when yes. she sees the beekeeper and realizes something's wrong and she's like, no, rewind, do it over again. Like, that's not... And this time there's no, there's no, it's not on the monitor of a desk full of monitors this time. No, it just, it just ends. ends. It just ends. With the hexagon, like closing in. Yeah. The yeah. end. Yeah, the end. All right. So one other thing on that episode, or well, on both episodes that I don't know if you guys picked up on. And I, it, again, could be nothing, but you remember in episode two, when, Wanda, they're at the magic show, and Wanda's trying to figure out why Vision's drunk. Uh, they go off, they go backstage, and she, or they go backstage after the show, and she tries to figure out what the hell's wrong with them, and she waves her hand in front of them, right, to scan them, and she sees the gum, she gets it out. In episode one, when she's talking to Agnes, uh, when Agnes comes back and brings her the pineapple, she keeps because she kept asking about her husband, right? Vision's there, and Wanda stops Agnes at the door, takes the pineapple, and goes to like to shut the door in her face. And Agnes is like, you know, oh hey, I'm Agnes. And she as she's shutting the door, Agnes does kind of the same wave. And it could be like she's just waving goodbye, but it looks like the same form 
like the hand gesture? Could it be like, again, if she's Ag- Agatha Harkness, they would use similar spells. Could it be a scanning spell? She's trying to figure out what the fuck's going on with Vision. Maybe. You know, like what he is. I don't know. Just a, a theory, you know. So, all right. After two episodes, where the fuck are we? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I don't know. <laughs> Theories. I don't know all right. I, here's what I will say, though, for, for having, as I said, feel like a lot of this feels like a, an inside joke I'm not in on. Um, but I feel like it's building to something cooler. And I think we're going to get by the end, obviously something that links to the next Marvel movie. So I'm excited about that. But I do yeah. think, and I want to say, it is kind of cool. That we're in a place on, on TV because of streaming and everything else that a major studio like Marvel and Disney would do something like this that's never been done before, right? Like yeah, no one's ever gotten two major movie stars to do this weird sort of eight episode, eight, I don't know what, what this is going to eight episode run, right? Yeah. Um, eight episodes of like a, what really feels like flashback to fifties and sixties TV show with a whole bunch of comic book stuff thrown into it. It's just kind of cool that we can do that now. Like this would not have happened five years ago, 10 years ago. No, yeah, not even in the, yeah, but before the MCU became as big as it was, you would have never heard of this. Right. So, yeah, I, I think the concept is really cool. Uh, the Getting into the theory side of it, of why they're doing it this way, uh, outside of the fact that, like, you know, we all agree that maybe the each episode being a different TV show is kind of like the long way around something. Um, I think... And Eric actually brought up a perfect point talking about going to his grandparents and like only having I Love Lucy to watch, right? We're we're on a a pretty a pretty good assumption that this is all in Wanda's mind because she rewinds things. And in the radio you hear Rhodey or somebody say, Wanda, who's doing this to you, right? Um within that going on that assumption that it is Wanda doing this. Um, if you think about it, growing up in Sokovia and then being experimented on, right? Like in whatever little free time she had, maybe the only thing she had to pass her time was to watch reruns of old shows, like old American sitcoms. And when she reverts from reality because of vision's death and everything that's what she reverts to she try she's trying to create a reality for herself where vision's alive but she's reverting subconsciously to these old shows she used to watch no i mean that's what that's what i would think my mouse ain't working there it goes so i can see what the fuck you said what's that oh no i was just looking at it's a Eric sent us a funny tweet from Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> President Trump has pardoned Thomas. <laughs> oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> it's dead, but it's fine. Um, yeah, you, you might be right. I, I don't know what's causing the, the reality shift that we see. I, I am pretty convinced after just talking with you guys, not that anybody tried to convince me that this is definitely her reality. Um, yeah, absolutely. Or her alternate reality, rather. Uh, but it's a bit of a mashup of, uh, of like the sort of House of M concept of, of Wanda breaking and um, reality, her changing reality because of it. But also um, the, the Vision comic from 2015, which has him living with the family he created, a wife and two kids in a, in a suburban neighborhood, which is... Uh, yeah, and, and there's touches on like the House of M. Uh, a bunch of YouTube videos I watched all tried to tie that into that wine bottle from episode one. Yeah, it says, the Raison de Mupre or something. Yeah, it was like the House of Misery, a House of Contempt. Whatever. Contempt. Yeah, so they tried to tie all that in. Um, but there's also something in there within the comics, and I could be like jamming a bunch of shit together in my in my memory but i think agatha harkness had something to do with it as well but it had to do with in the comics wanda's 
twins with vision obviously turn out to not be real, right? Uh, there, she just created them, but it's something. I think in the comics, somebody manipulated her to do it in order to dampen her powers. Like I guess, like to keep her focused on something to dampen her powers. That could be something that's going on here too, you know. And then finally, to like the House of M thing, like uh, leading up to something bigger. We speculated before, and I'm kind of I'm more and more convinced, knowing that it leads into Spider-Man three and uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. That this is probably going to lead into maybe the very last episode or the last five minutes of the last episode or whatever. It's probably going to lead into like an opposite of House of M, where instead of like in House of M she utters no more mutants and it dwindles the number of mutants down to 198. What if she brings all the mutants into our reality? And it could have to do with multiverse to, you know, whatever, not how they're going to tie all that in, but they've got to do it somehow. And again, while Feige keeps saying, you know, we're not, uh, we're not touching on that yet. We've said before, we think that might be a whole bunch of smoke and mirrors, you know. So I think it's going to have something to do with that and the fact that the Infinity Stone that kickstarted her powers, there's something in there about these episodes that I think is going to have to do with the mutants coming later on in the MCU. I could definitely see that. <laughs> Me too. Just a thought, but I think I think it's a safe bet. <laughs> Again, if I were a betting man, I'd bet on it. They're laying they're laying some uh, groundwork for the Young Avengers. You know, it's going to be Phase Six or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, especially if she brings in her twins, and they follow any of the Young Avengers comic books where two of her kids, or or you find out later in those comics that two of those characters are her fake children that were fake, found out to be fake, weren't around, and then they're suddenly back again for some reason. Who the fuck knows? Whatever the hell. (laughs) Something happened, right? But, I mean, it could also be like, you know, because one of the Infinity Stones started her and, like, unlocked her and Pietro's powers, and we we dwelled on the fact that maybe it's because they were mutants, but their powers were locked for whatever reason, that during the snap or the multiple snaps that ha- have happened between Thanos, Hulk, and Iron Man, maybe they uh, somehow accidentally unlocked mutant potential in everybody. Not everybody, but like, you know, the mutants that you're going to find. Mm-hmm. Because it would still tie into the Infinity Stone, you know. Which one was the, the was it the Space Stone or it was the Tesseract, right? No, it was Loki's scepter, wasn't it? I can't fucking remember which one it was in Age of Ultron. Which whichever stone it was, they were using to unlock their potential. It's Tesseract, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. I think I think that was it. <laughs> and then now it's uh. It was on the Infinity Gauntlet for three different snaps, so somebody could have fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Opened up multiverses and brought mutants into the world. Right. I mean, I don't know. So where do we go from here? Uh, I know Eric made a note about if we had episode one was the 50s, episode two is the 60s, are we jumping chronologically, 70s next? Yeah, and you gotta have uh, you gotta have a uh, uh, rut play um, a mom in a Sony sitcom. That's the only way you can go. I want it. I want it to be Three's Company. I want it to be a takeoff on Three's Company. That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, It'd be him, her, and Agnes. Yeah, like if if the opening theme is something you know, like the "Come and Knock on Our Door," that whole thing, like that'd be great. <laughs> yep. And I know. I guess it would be more '80s, right? But I know at one point in the trailer. They definitely look like uh, the Keaton parents from Family Ties. When that's when you see the crib, yeah. the, the dual cribs. So 
they're going to touch on that one too. So yeah, and a kid, and there's like a vision, and a kid are holding twins, right? Isn't that? Am I confusing this with something else? Yeah, somehow they're both. Yeah, they're they're both holding kids in one of the trailer shots. But there's that one shot in the very first trailer. There's one shot of them looking like the Keatons, very much like the Keaton living room. And there's two bassinets in front of them, and two pacifiers pop up at once, and they're both like, "Oh, you know," <laughs> like they they step step back, like, "Oh." So I don't know. Again. Um, you know, if they want to do twin, if they want to do twin references, they can also have Full House going on in here. <laughs> yeah, is oh that going to be the 90s? that'll be the '90s sitcom? Is that an '80s or a '90s sitcom? No, that's '80s. I'm pretty sure that's '80s. I have to look it up now. It's more the '90s, late '80s, I think. Yeah, late uh, '80s, early '90s, because it was going on eighty eighty seven. Yeah, yeah. Family ties definitely early '80s. Yeah, that was uh, eighty two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then '90s is like Full House or Family Matters. One of those Married shows. with Children. Yeah, there you go. Married with Children. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> it wouldn't make a out, lot of sense, but it would be hilarious. If she comes out, Peggy hair. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah he like, would put right. his hand in his pants like Al. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Got to come out with the spandex and the uh, the teased hair. Yeah. It'll solve one of my five fantasies. <laughs> They've honestly got a lot of options, though. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, for '90s, I mean, there was like Home Improvement, yeah, uh, right. yeah. uh, Third Rock from the Sun, um, uh, Fresh Third Prince. Although song. I don't know how you'd work Fresh Prince into this, really. But <laughs> if you can Paul go- Bettany comes out rapping, I'll piss my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you could go the opposite way and go like Frasier or something crazy. Yeah. You could. Cheers, Frazier, yeah, all that. Third, third Rock would be a funny nod to Sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, friends, how could you forget Friends? Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. God. They yeah. have to do Friends. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so who knows? Too bad Universal owns that. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I, w- I wonder if that'll have something to do with it. Like, not so much Leave it to Beaver and whatever, but like as we get there and, and different companies own those rights, like, I wonder if they'll be able to. If they can only go from sort of the ABC, you know, family of shows. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they might be stuck in that, but I guess we'll find out. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I would say, I think this is, like I said, Wanda dealing with Vision's death in the only way subconsciously she knows how, but maybe Sword captured her or I, I don't know you, you know I, I don't know because the end to end game you really don't know what happens to half of them anyway right so I mean you see them at the funeral but that's it you know it could be you know sword goes after some people or so uh, who knows but sword's definitely involved in this obviously so could, there could be a reason they're monitoring her and it's well, she's a so in the comics, sword stands for something different than it does in the MCU. In the MCU, the W stands for weapon. Yes. Right, instead of world. And so And she's definitely a man made weapon. She is and 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 so is Vision. Yeah. So it could definitely be to do with that. Uh it could be that she straight up had a mental breakdown shortly after Tony's funeral and they're just monitoring her. But, you know. I don't know. Uh Obviously, like, like I said, we're going to find out. Um, so, so let me ask this. When we reviewed The Boys, at the end of every discussion, it was, man, I can't wait for this next episode to drop. When we discussed The Mandalorian, it was, man, I can't wait for this next episode to drop. Do you feel that way about this? Or are you sort of like, I'm interested to see where this goes? And Yeah, I'm right there. Um, and mostly because I know it's building to more of the MCU shit. I'm not I'm nowhere as excited about it as I was about either one of those shows or uh as excited as I thought I was going to be. When this, you know, leading up to this we were all like WandaVision is going to start and then all the MCU shit is going to kick off but we were we were just chomping at the bit to watch these things and now I'm like and then it was a Ozzy and Harriet rerun and you're like, well, I don't, I don't Yeah. Yeah, I was, you know, so yeah, so like, I, 
they've got my interest, but it's very tempered at the moment. So I'm hoping, like we said, more and more of reality starts to bleed through quicker and quicker. You know, so it'll get better. Because right now it's just kind of like I'll, I'll stick with it, but it's definitely. Like I said, definitely it was on the cusp of had you only dropped one episode, you would have lost a lot of viewers. I, I agree. Yeah, so I think that was smart on their part. How about you, Eric? Yeah, definitely. I, this is one uh, I'm definitely going to watch it, but I'm not like eager. I'm not I'm not counting count down until Friday. And then maybe it'll get better when they've started sort of breaking away from this formula a little bit and doing more of the mcu story that's somewhere embedded in here but for now i could wait till next friday i don't give a shit yeah just binge (laughs) more yeah Uh, yeah i'm with you Uh, i never thought i'd say this about anything mcu related but i'm actually more excited about tomorrow night when the next episode of the stand drops (laughs) (laughs) which again if you're not watching that on cbs all access go check it out but uh yeah, so that's it. We got any alibis for this one? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that was a lot of buildup for a <laughs> just like this show right now. <laughs> Hopefully, I, I, I did go back and I did go back and look. I'll just go ahead and put this out there. You can maybe cut it later if it's not worth it. But um, I did go back and look at what uh, sitcoms uh, Disney has rights to from the 90s. And it is really, really slim pickings. NBC owns almost all of them. And what's left, um, Odd Man Out. Um Jeez, I mean, I, I'm looking for titles that were actually interesting from the 90s. Um, there's just not a lot in here, man. Not a lot at all. They do have the first uh, couple um, we talked about, which I don't even remember what the hell they were now. But um, Maybe they'll become animated like The Simpsons. They do have Home Improvement. That was one of theirs. I could see them getting through the 70s and 80s and then just going straight like yeah. rescue, rescue mission for Wanda or whatever or like now now we're we're there. You know you know what I mean? Get past the 70s and 80s for these shows that are in our head and then we just kind of go on from there to the actual plot that's going to move everything forward. Jeff Foxworthy show. There we go. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> All both episodes of the Jeff Fox were the show. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just Vision walking in with a big fat mustache. Yeah. <laughs> you might be in an alternate reality. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got hex powers, you might be a mutant. <laughs> you might be an android. <laughs> Damn. All right, I think that's all we got for this one. I think you're uh, right. Come on, MCU, kick it into high gear. Maybe it'll get better when it's getting more into like our timeline that we were actually watching shows. <laughs> but for now, we need more. We need more. Step it up, guys. Come on. All right, uh, so that's it for the show. Uh, you guys, like, subscribe, ring a bell. Uh, let us know what you think of the show in the comments down below. Or uh, hit us up at whatifgeeks.com, whatifgeeks at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Gmail. And uh, let us know your thoughts on the show, if you love it, if you're just mediocre like us and hoping for more. And uh, we will catch you for episode three next week. That's it. Good night, Tony. Good night, Agnes. Uh, Good night, Wanda. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to think of a forever. I don't. I don't have one. So that's, yeah. Nobody died. Nobody died. <laughs> I could say good night, vision forever, but that I already did that. I think I already did that in the Avengers in game. <laughs> good night, piece of chewing gum forever. <laughs>